We need to have this balance. So most of our sins are caused by being far from Allah. When you love Allah, when you truly love Allah, then you obey Allah. You look at everything Allah says in the Quran al Kareem. You look at every divine command. You will look at every word. Then you will see that Allah loves His Messenger. Allah loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Then we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Before we start to talk about his virtues or his life or his character, later on you learn these things, then you change. If we may hear, just ponder on the famous uh, poem of the female Gnostic Rabia al adawiyah of the second century of Hijrah, the Islamic calendar. Our sisters should be very proud that we have a long history of female women of Allah, of female Gnostics, of great female ascetics who laid down the way to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. Rabia al adawiyya may Allah show her mercy and reward her for her guidance and for her words, says in some beautiful lines addressing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أُحِبُّكَ حُبَّيْنُ حُبَّ الْهَوَى وَحُبَّ لِأَنَّكَ أَهْلُ لذاك. I love thee twice. أُحِبُّكَ حُبَّيْنُ I love thee twice. حُبَّ الْهَوَى A passionate love. A desires love. وَحُبَّ لِأَنَّكَ أَهْلُ لذاك. And the second, I love you because you deserve to be loved. فَأَمَّا الَّذِي هُوَ حُبُّ الْهَوَى فَشُغْلِي بِذِكْرِكَ عَمَّنْ سِوَاكَ As to the love that is passionate, desires, stems from the desire of the heart, it is the preoccupation of the tongue in the invocation of your names, the remembrance of God. She finds all pleasure in the remembrance of God, in invoking His names. As much as we find pleasure in tasting a delicious dish, some delicacy, she finds all pleasure in invoking the names of Allah. This is the first type of love. Of love. The second type of love, she explains, is وَأَمَّا الَّذِي أَنْتَ أَهْلُ اللَّهُ فَلَسْتُ أَرَى الْكَوْنَ حَتَّى أَرَاكَ As to the one that you deserve, I don't see anything in this world until I see you. This is if you want to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where do you stand in this universe? What is your position? When you look at things, for example, you're taking a medicine, you're sitting your exams at school, you don't pass, or you don't recover. What's your attitude? Rebelliousness? Anger? Why is this happening to me? Or looking at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does things throughout all these causes and means, coming back to Him, to beseech him, to call upon him, to invoke his name, and ask him what you want. We should see God when we, by our insights, when we look at everything. Because in Islam, nothing has the power to do anything by its nature. It is God who creates on the spur of the moment, the power in everything to do what you want. Even a knife does not cut by its nature. Allah, God creates the power of cutting in the knife at the moment when you want it to cut. The same also for food doesn't cause satiation, but when the food reaches your stomach and is digested, Allah creates the feeling of satiation. For medicine, medicine does not cure by its nature. God creates the power of healing in the medicine if Allah wants. So go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at Him. Sayyidah Rabi'a al adawiyah doesn't see anything. She has annihilated to all causes and to all facades. She sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His direct creation, His direct power interfering in everything. That is the type of love that we start from to reach here. So we start loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Allah loves him. Allah ordered us in the al- Quran al-Kareem to obey Rasulullah. Allah ordered us to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And he says, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he says in some authentic statements, for example, in both al-Bukhari and Muslim, in a statement agreed upon, a piece of tradition, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, 
on the authority of Anas radiyallahu ta'ala an. La yu'minu ahadukum hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min walidihi wa waladihi wa nasi ajma'in. None of you is a believer unless I am dearer to him, more beloved to him than his father, his son, and all mankind. Ask yourself, where do you stand? Where is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in your life? What are the priorities? What is the list of lovers? People you love? Show me the list and where does Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's name come in this list? He says, none of you is a believer. The commentators say here, it means a perfect believer. Because loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is different from believing in him. To be a true Muslim, you need to believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Amongst the principles of our belief in him is to believe that he is the best of mankind. But attachment to him, loving him, varies from one to another. So if you don't feel this attachment, you're still a Muslim. So the explanation here is you're not a perfect believer. The perfect believer is he who loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than anything else, more than anyone else, including his father, his son, and all mankind. In one statement also, a sound hadith, in Al-Bukhari, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam talks to Sayyiduna Umar. Sayyiduna Umar started, initiated the conversation. He said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Wallahi ya Rasulullah, la anta ahabbu ilayya min kulli shay illa nafsi illati bayna jambay. O Messenger of Allah, you are dearer to me than everything except my own ego, my own self. Now people say to each other, I love you, I love you friend, I love my friends, I love... But when it comes to the pocket, for example, don't come to the pocket. Okay. I love you, but it's a claim just. Don't come to my own things, my own money, my own comfort. I love you, but I can't help you midnight. I love you, but I can't borrow you. I can't lend you any money. I love you, but I can't help you. What is this love? Just words, claims. In English they say, actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. If you want to prove something, you need to prove it through actions, not through words. I believe the Islamic world has, has got enough of words, demonstrations in politics. What is keeping us behind is that we are busying ourselves with words. Even in politics, in demonstrations, on a social level, in economy, in every level, we're busy with words. We speak a lot. And others are doing, are working, achieving something. If you love someone, you have to prove it to them. They say also in the English language, a friend indeed is a friend in need. To prove your friendship, you prove it, not in time of prosperity, but in time of adversity. A friend indeed is a friend in need. So here, I love you, Sayyidina Umar says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you're dearer to me, you're more beloved to me than anyone else, except my own ego, except my own self. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من كل شيء ومن نفسه التي بين جنبه. Nay, you're not a believer. None of you is a believer unless I am dearer to him, more beloved to him than anything, and dearer to him than his own self. Do you see this? Can you see this here approach to loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to see where he should stand in our lives, brothers, sisters? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not merely a messenger who conveyed a message. Is not just a man who brought guidance. Rasulullah is not solely someone who received revelation. 